the beginning. Denise Peters is the CEO of CMI, creative marketing innovations firm located in Erie County. CMI uses the basic universal principles of the law of attraction to help businesses large and small succeed. Denise and our company are pleased to bring you over 50 combined years of experience in marketing. This marketing is both in the traditional sense and online social media marketing, and most recently the divine marketing concept. Denise is a social media strategist and personal branding expert. She works with companies and business professionals to raise visibility, generate sales leads, and close business through digital, inspirational, marketing, and social media. She's extremely active within the community and is a current member of the Erie Noon Timer Toastmasters Association. Denise currently holds Vice President of Membership Position for the Mayville Toastmaster Group in addition to sitting on a panel board for the Erie Athena <coughs> Women's Empowerment Group as a specialist in her field. Denise's greatest accomplishment in life besides raising her two sons is being a part of an initiative that has built a mega club in Charlotte, North Carolina to raise money for cancer research, prevention, and awareness through working with ants for a cure. Denise is a firm believer that things happen for a reason in life. You create your own success. She believes it takes a winning belief or spirit to be a success. And she always manages to have a healthy attitude each and every day. After all, to be a success, you have to believe you are one. Right? Amen. Amen. in marketing and through today's instruction you will learn how to tap into the signs in life how to push through fear Olivia mentioned fear this morning we're going to get through that together we're going to learn the proper tools it'll take to goal set and find your way to your passion I have worked with no less than a few hundred companies in the last few years and I can sell you all the marketing tools you need to make you and your company a success. And I'm happy to do that, by the way. But doesn't it all begin with you? I've had many business owners come to me, successful business owners, will say to me, Denise, I, I have made it in business now, whatever that means to you or happened to have meant for that particular individual, Perhaps it could be monetary, it could be a great car in the driveway, or the numerous vacations, or it could mean a heart-centered balance. I've made it, they say. But yet, something else is missing in their lives. Now, here's the thing. I can tell you what's missing. It's the passion. Where did the passion go? These are successful men and women who have run successful companies for the past 15, 20, 25, 30 years, and they're still coming to me. What am I missing in my life? Let's take a journey. <clears throat> I'd like a few minutes to just explain divine marketing to you. It's a heart-centered influence for visionary entrepreneurs. You have to have the vision. And by vision, I mean intuition. How many of us listen to our own intuitions? And how many of us choose to ignore that? But how powerful they are in our lives. Because I can tell you, for divine marketing, you can't have vision and passion without talking about that higher power. In divine marketing, we're going to introduce to you spirit. It's part of the equation, mind, body, soul. Now we introduce spirit. What spirit is, it's a sense of self, it's a sense of wholeness, it's a sense of well-being, that you are in the world right where you should be at this moment in time. As I mentioned before, we cannot speak about divine marketing without talking about the higher power. For me, it's God. For you, it might be a sense of self, a sense of spirit. But each and every one of us pray to a higher power. Let's take a moment and be clear why we're here. Over and above this, 
You all are here for a reason. I'm a firm believer there are no coincidences in life. They're just not. We are all here in this room for a reason, and I firmly believe that you will all take something from this class. I guarantee that. Let's be clear while we're here. We're going to learn to get in touch with the silence within ourselves and know that everything in your life happens for a purpose. We're going to learn to tap into our own intuitions and learn to listen to be open to receive the signs in life, and that's the fun part of this whole process here. Let's get started. The two most influential words in the English dictionary, I am, think about how powerful these two words can be. I am afraid. I am a failure. I am no good. I'll never be anything. How about this? I'm successful. I'm strong. I'm independent. Do you see what just those two small words can do to the way you think and perceive yourself? Very, very powerful. Let's talk about fear. Olivia touched on fear this morning. Everyone has got a fear about fear, don't we? <coughs> it has a very negative connotation, but I can tell you everything you want is on the other side of fear. Think about it this way. What if you truly identified what you want in life? You're now feeling a little bit of fear in the bottom of your stomach. You're feeling that, that sense of, wow, I don't know if I can do this or not. Aren't you feeling alive? If you have found something that truly makes you feel passionate and that you want in, in your life, doesn't that make you feel alive? Fear doesn't have to help you stay stuck. Fear can help you take that giant leap towards what you want in life. Does this happen to you? Everyone has their own journey in life. We're all on our own paths. Perhaps you're going down the path. And you're hitting all kinds of about signs in life. You're hitting all kinds of signs that stop you in your tracks. Well, maybe it's just not the road or the journey you should be going down. You're, you're running into all detour signs, do not enter, wrong way, stop, turn around, go back. Listen to that because life should not be that hard. If you're going down your path and you have a chance to go left or right and you've been going left the whole time, go right. I guarantee you those roadblocks will still be there, but not to the level of what you have been facing up until this point. Go down another road and see where the, that path will lead you. We're going to talk about how our childhood influences help mold and shape us who we are today. And it all stems from what, what we tell ourselves, too. Now, as children, whether it was our parents or our peers or what we told ourselves, this is a prime example. There's a lot going on in our heads, aren't there? Not good enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough. It all stems with up here what we tell ourselves. We have to catch ourselves in the moment because this does stem back to the I am factor. If you catch yourself in the moment talking negatively about yourself, hey folks, this is about the law of attraction. We have to believe that we are already the success that we were meant to be for this to work. So if you catch yourself in the moment talking negatively those I am words, stop yourself. Retrain your brain to think positive thoughts that, yes, you can do it. Another important factor, when we were kids, and you might have heard this in your own household, stop daydreaming. Stop it. Stay on task. Well, where did that go? Did that also teach us not to be creative? Not to tap into perhaps the best we can be? Because we were told to stop. Well, I can tell you that it was prevalent in my household, and I had a great upbringing, but I had very focused parents. Stay on task. And I did, and I was, I was very creative. Now, for those of you moving along the lines of what we were, those events, those messages that we were taught when we were young, that helped to mold and shape us who we are as adults. For those of you that had seen me speak 
as a model speaker in, in the spring, it was a very terrifying speech for me. And I'll explain that. Because I had an event that happened to me when I was 11 years old that no one else should have had happened to them. I actually won a candy sale contest. And I was pretty proud of that. Talk about Klondike bars, boy, how appropriate this is. <coughs> Won a candy sale contest, and as a school, we went to a bus, they hired a bus, and took us to Radio City Music Hall. I was born and raised in Connecticut, so it was an easy drive into the city. So we went to Radio City Music Hall to see a play, and during intermission, it was fun. Full of excitement, my parents. My parents actually gave me a dollar to go and spend, and I was excited. Do you realize how far a dollar went back then? It was exciting. I actually got up and went into the, in, out in the intermission area, and when I tell you, I looked around, because it was crowded. The theory was busy. There were no less than 70 or 100 people around me, and full of excitement, I was peering over the shoulder of another peer, a girl, a boy in front of me, doesn't matter. Then it happened. At the blink of an eye, I was taken. Someone came up from behind me and started to pull me away. Scary. I was lost in fear. For a moment, I was absolutely stunned. What is happening to me? Now, at that very moment in time, we talk about visions, we talk about intuition. That was one poignant moment in my life when I listened to it. There was a man's voice that came very clearly in my head as I was being taken. And he said to me, do not let him get you behind the red velvet curtain. He said it so sternly that I couldn't help snap out of my fear. And as I was being dragged and pulled, I saw the red velvet curtain and we were heading in that direction. So flight or fight kicked in. And I did listen to my intuition and I got away. Yes, I was afraid in the moment and terrified because when I snapped back to myself, I was sitting back in the theater chair but I was frightened that he was still watching me. Now, this was a Catholic school field trip, and it is, has nothing to do with religion, but it has something to do with my story. Because you see, as being raised Catholic, I, was, I thought that this was my fault, mm -hmm. somehow. So I didn't tell the nuns, and I didn't tell my parents. As a result, I became the most introvert that you'll ever meet. I lost myself in my teenage years. My 20s were horrific because I didn't know how to handle life and I totally lost my voice. Now as time came and went, I struggled with, why me? I was the victim, wasn't I? I discovered though, as I grew, I was facing one of the larger birthdays, I realized that people started coming to me and they wanted some answers. They just wanted a sense of peace in their life. They just wanted to know that they also had a purpose. So I started to think to myself, wow, maybe there is a lesson in all of this. As, as bad as that was, I started to view it a little bit differently. And in the Spring Toastmasters Conference, as I was speaking, I was actually taking myself back there in time and learning to walk through the curtain because it represented something that was so surreal and so horrific because I never knew what was behind that curtain. I never knew, I never had that opportunity. And I was always frightened. Just like my experience, I guarantee you each and every one of you have had your own experiences in life that have stopped us in our tracks. But what if you could view it differently? What if you can choose to either walk through the curtain or walk through the threshold of the door, revisit it again? Let's not stay stuck in our fear. 
Is it scary? Oh my gosh, it is. But I guarantee you, every time you walk through your curtain and go through your door, you will realize it will become, it will make you a bigger, better, stronger version of yourself. And every time you walk through, it will help you to grow. So I suggest you revisit in your mind those events, those circumstances, whatever the case might be, once again, and take a giant leap of faith that it will be okay. This is my favorite part of the seminar. So how many of you believe God gives us signs? He's actually trying to talk to us each and every day. Do we listen or we just sort of blow them off? Right? He does. He's trying to reach us every day. Case in point, from the simple to the more complicated. And I'm going to share with you some of my signs. But first of all, a typical sign could be a cloud in the sky. What about a heart? How about an angel? One day my husband and I were driving and he said to me, oh my God, there's Yogi Bear in the sky. And we laughed because it just reminded us of our childhood. So how fun is that? How about the radio in your car or on your iPod? That particular song comes on at that moment in time when you're really questioning life or really struggling. And this particular song comes on and you say, oh my gosh, as if they're talking to me. And those lyrics just jump out and they have meaning to you. Yes, it is a sign. He's actually trying to speak to us. Now, I came back from the brink of that abduction having a gift of vision of, yes, I do call it intuition. I want to share with you a very important story to me. I'm a very concrete girl. I need those signs and I'm always asking God I brought my cell phone. Just to show you, I have a direct line to God. I just want to say that right now. So when I call on him, I think he's aggravated with me because I'm always asking for signs. So the day comes when I actually cross over to me, <laughs> I swear he's going to say to me, what? <laughs> what? So I'm a firm believer in signs, and I ask for the signs, and that's a very important lesson. Because if you're on the edge, if you don't know where life could lead you. Ask for the signs. One day, going back about 10 years ago, when I was struggling about, okay, I've got this gift. What do I do with this gift? I have people coming to me by the hundreds, literally. And I don't have the answers, but somehow when you're in the moment, doesn't the, the right answer, don't they come? Don't the answers come? So at this point in time, when this was all new to me and I discovered that, yes, I could get my voice back, it was a rainy day. I remember this very well. Not only rainy, it was a monsoon out there. Cold day in March, and I went for a ride. Have you ever been there in your life before where you just, you don't care? You're going to get in the car, you're in one of those moods, somebody better give you an answer as to why you're here. I call those bathroom floor moments. It's when your best friend shows up and scoops you off the bathroom floor and puts life into perspective again for you. I was in one of those moods, and I went for a drive. It's, it's raining like crazy. And I'm thinking to myself, you gave me this gift. I was thinking at that point in time it was a burden. <coughs> you just have to follow me for a moment there. So I go for a drive, and I end up at a park. And this park is, has a walking path around. I usually love to walk on that walking path. But this day, I got out of my car. It's pouring. I don't care. The tears are coming down. And I'm walking, and I say to him, why did you give me this gift? It, why? I don't have the answers. And I said, if it's true, God, that you gave me this gift, I need a sign. Walking ten paces ahead. It's, it's raining. The sky opens up about yay big. And down through the clouds is a beam of light. And that beam of light went directly in the path in front of me onto a gold, 14 karat gold cross in the middle of the path, lit up like the brightest diamond in the sky. And if you think I was a mess before, <laughs> I'm just saying. Scoop down, picked it up, it stays with me every waking moment of the day. 
I promised God then I would not ask him for more signs. <laughs> I always have my direct line to God. He's, he always answers. He's so good. <coughs> You're going to also enjoy this story too. I'm a very motivated person. I love to feed my soul. I love to feed my mind. I always say if you have time in the evening to watch mindless TV, you certainly have time to feed your mind, don't you? So I try to do that. And at this point in time, two years ago, before I started my company, I was taking a self-help seminar. And we were reading the book, Thinking Grow Rich. How many of you have had the opportunity to read this fabulous book? It was a book produced in the 30s during the Great Depression, and they still use these concepts today. It's about believing in yourself, believing that you can be the success that you want to be, not giving up in, on your dreams and your passion. I was reading this book. It was in the middle of the class. We got to in about 100 pages or so. And I'm reading it, and all of a sudden, there's a paragraph in the book, it's late at night, and I'm reading. This paragraph, just like the song on the radio where the lyrics stand out, the words stood out on this page. And it said, you must read the teachings by Gandhi. And I went, what? I'm frustrated at this point in time, because I'm thinking, where in the book did it ever mention Gandhi? But this one paragraph, now we go to Gandhi, and I'm thinking, okay. Okay, maybe I'm just tired. So I close the book and put it on the nightstand and then go to sleep. Now I'm a professed workaholic, very type A personality. I wake up at 5.30 the next morning. By the way, I'm working on that. I'm working to have balance in my life because they tell me I should. <laughs> and I go downstairs and I open my laptop preparing for the day. Internet Explorer loads. I'm thinking about putting on coffee. Internet Explorer loads and I look and I look again. <coughs> The link that I saw was teachings by Gandhi. <laughs> and I went, oh my God, this is going to be good. Because now I know, because he sends me signs all the time. So I said to God, wait a minute, wait a minute, I need my coffee. <laughs> so I go put on my coffee. It, I take my mug and sit down to the computer. And of course, I look up at the ceiling and I laugh, thinking and knowing I cannot wait to see this. Now, all my life, I've been struggling, find, trying to find the perfect religion, because where is God? I don't know. I went from religion to religion to religion after my own personal experience. My second question I'm always searching for is, what do I do with this gift? What is the, where's the lesson? Because I don't understand. Now, the next two links that appear, so I click through, obviously I look at the ceiling with a big chuckle, because. God's in the ceiling, isn't he? So I always look up, like he's in the ceiling. So I click the link through, and the first link that appears after that is God has no religion. Isn't he? Isn't how true that is, boy? He's within all of us. Second link, directly after, sorry, is your life is your lesson. And I went, oh my God, there it is. I promise you, God, I'll never ask for more signs. I keep asking to this day. The third sign for in my life happened to me last March. Very busy. I got a lot going on. I left for work in the morning. It was a beautiful day, but I was feeling disconnected. You know when I mentioned before that if you have time to watch TV and just stare at it, you might as well be feeding your mind and your soul. Well, I hadn't done that for a few days, probably about four days. So I was feeling a sense of disconnect. And I, as I left for work that morning, I was thinking to myself, if I only taken time to feel a sense of connection to myself, boy, life would be great. So I took off in the car. For some reason that day, I headed down the country road. And as I did that, I realized I was the only one on the road. And it was a glorious day. And I said that out loud. I said, Lord, thank you for such a glorious, splendid day. And as I drove, maybe another two miles, I came to a crossroads in the country road. Still alone, it was a gorgeous day. And all of a sudden, somebody said, look at the sign. And I went, what? Turned down the radio, because I thought the radio was on. Now I'm at the crossroads, and again, a little softer, look at the sign. 
sign. And I looked across the way, and there was a church. And I thought I had a strong pull to drive up to the sign in front of the church. And this is what I saw. It says, we love you, Denise. And it still, to this day, gives me chills. I might have been meant for someone else, maybe dealing with a loss. But for me, that day, it was for me. And I, and I just smiled, and that was my sense of connection. So if you are open to receive the signs in life, just welcome them into your life because he, she, whoever the higher power is for you, they are trying to communicate and get you on the right road that you need to be on. Now, going back, I have the, had the distinct pleasure to talk to many business owners. They're afraid. There's that fear factor again, afraid to grow. I'm here to teach you a couple of tools that will help you get to that point. We're going to ultimately define that true passion in your life. Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid to try. To be afraid not to try. How important. As I mentioned before, I could sell you all the business tools you need to be seen online. But it all does start with you. You have to believe in yourself. We don't have to accept that life is what it is. We can make more out of it. And the way to finding your true passion is to set goals. <coughs> it's not enough to set them in your mind. You have to be concrete about it and write them down. I do wholeheartedly also recommend that you write down your goals, I mean, you revisit your goals two or three times a day. <coughs> Another good powerful tool is to use the voice recording on your, on your smartphone. I use a vision board too. I created a vision board at home. Where I, where I envision my company to be, how I'm going to get there, usually the middle, the middle of the vision board has to do with the law of attraction and then what I'm going to get as a result for me, just a sense of being right where I want to be within my life, which is the motivational speaker. Going back to a couple years ago when I was taking the self-motivating seminar, she had us write down our goals. So I immediately came up with 32 because I'm very type A. So I wrote them all down. My husband struggled with two, and he struggled to write two for two weeks. But that's okay. That's his life. This is mine. We're very different people, but somehow it works. So I, after the course, wrote down those goals, put them away inside of the book, put them away. A year and a half later, I was cleaning in that area, cleaned it out, moved the book. The paper fell on the ground. And this is the power of writing down your goals. I picked up the paper. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing because I read down my list. And I achieved 30 of those 32 goals. It's so important to write it down because your subconscious mind starts to kick in. Your mind doesn't know the difference between what is real and what isn't. I want you all to start living your lives as though you are in the future and not the past or the present. I know that for some of you that's a hard concept, but if we start to do that, then the universe responds by giving us what we need and are looking for. So it's important to write down goals. I brought in a piece of paper, another one that I had started about a year and a half ago. You see how tattered it is. I keep it in my pocketbook and I revisit it every now and again. And it is really happening. It is really happening. By identifying your goals, clearly there's going to be top goals that rise up to the top that you are more passionate about. Pay attention to those goals because as a successful business person, most successful business people I've met love doing what they do so much they would actually do it for free. 
I want you to feel and get yourself to that passion in your life. Would you offer your services that you're providing now for free? If you are, you know that you're there. You know that you're there. I'm not advocating that you offer them for free. I struggle with that myself. I love doing what I do, and I'm always looking to give services away. I find that what we're trying to do is identify our true passion. It's called getting your authentic groove on. And by doing that, you'll find your way to your own personal brand, your own personal niche. I suggest then you do something with that niche or personal brand because that's what makes you feel alive, those three or four goals. Do something. And don't worry about what your competitors are doing because if you're so passionate enough to follow your dream, it doesn't matter, does it? Because there's so many of us in the world. We perhaps can offer something out there that is unique to us that people are looking for, such as divine marketing. This has to do with law of attraction. You heard me mention live in the future, let go of the past, let go of the present. What is it that you want? I guarantee you that this is not an overnight get rich quick thing. <laughs> it takes time to identify your passions. It takes time. What I am suggesting is you, may, you don't have to know how to get there. You just need to lean in and believe. If you have a top goal and you just don't know how to get there, that's okay. Throw it out there to the universe and let it take over. Because I guarantee you, if you're struggling and, and want to create a concept and don't know how to begin, the resources will be sent to you. For me, it could be the next day. Someone comes off the elevator and comes into the office. I get that email in my inbox or a friend set, comes to me and says, I have a connection for you. There it is. Just let it be and it will happen. No great things are created suddenly. Just keep that in mind. Don't be impatient, but keep on your path. And most of all, believe in yourself. So as a wrap-up, before I open it up to any questions you might have, let's, re let's recap. Be open to receive the signs in your life. Pay more attention. Maybe when you head home today, you might hear that one song on the radio that just says, oh my god, there it is. Have no fear. Please think of fear differently and don't let it stop you. I want you to be feeling that fear, but in a good way. You should be feeling that fear because you're about ready to take that giant leap. That's feeling alive. Work your way through your goals and your passions will emerge. And utilize that. You're creating your own authentic niche. <coughs> And then go out there and tell the world. And ultimately, that will equate to making a nice living for yourselves. Everyone's sitting here like, does anyone have any questions? Or have any stories they'd like to share about great science? I just have a question. So what do you do if your responsibilities are so great that you can't actually Look at, you can look at your goals, but you're like, well, wait a minute, I would love well, to do these, but I can't do them because I have so many responsibilities. Yes. You have to really take a hard look as to what is draining your time. Because I, I assure you that probably some of, those, some of those issues you're dealing with right now are a time drain. So if we can identify those and sort of push those to the side or the back burner for now, because ultimately, we're talking about you and your future and what you want out of life. You may be stuck in helping other people. We're, we're as women, we are very much the pleasers. So we try to help everyone. But I do suggest that you identify what is holding you back or stopping you. Or you might have that fear factor to just let some of those go to take that, that leap of faith. But we can certainly talk afterwards. I'd be glad to help you and walk you through that. Yes. You mentioned the voice recorder on your phone. What do you do with that or how do you use that? You actually record yourself. There should be a setting within your phone that allows you to do that. I do that. I have a 40-minute drive between where I live and, and where I work in Erie. 
So I'll record myself. Talk about getting sick of hearing yourself. But, you, but it works. What are you recording? Now? Record yourself, your thoughts. <coughs> tell it. Be specific. What do you want? What do you want? Because when you say it, then you are putting it out there to the universe, and the universe, through the law of attraction, will begin to send you the means to do it. So it's it could be something living within your head that you just want to say and you want to get out there and you, or maybe you, perhaps you know how to take an, an item and make it better. Make it concrete. Let's hear you know, what your passions and your goals are. So you're not reading your goals list on that. Yes, you don't have to because you're actually recording yourself for a later playback. So that's the same as visiting your notes over and over again. Can you define this law of attraction? The law of attraction is the basic principle whoops, that states if we live as though we are a success, whether or not that's happened yet, the law of the universe will begin, will begin to respond. It has to do with your subconscious mind. Because your subconscious mind doesn't know that you're a well-published author or you know, whoever you want to be, a world-renowned speaker. But it will work very hard to bring that to you. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And to study the law of attraction, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there on there. A really good, I can't think of the name, that gentleman that wrote the book, The, Se the, um, the Secret. Jack Campbell? Yes. He's got a great book out there called um, the, po the Power of I read it all the time. Jack Canfield, he's got a book about that thing. And if that scares you, don't let it because it's an easy read and it all begins to come into clarity. How many of you have read the book, The Secret? It's a, just a tiny, oh, Bob, 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 Bob Proctor. Oh, Bob Proctor wrote The Secret. And Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yes, but he has a book out there. It's called The Success Principles. It just came to me. And that's the one that's this thick, but I love it. I use it as my Bible. I refer back to it when I'm having a down day, and it all comes back into clarity. So a couple of easy reads I suggest out there. But that, that little book called The Secret really did start this whole momentum for me. If there's something you want in your life, read the book, please. It will be life-changing. What was that author, Bob? Bob Proctor. How are we doing on time? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, we should also agree with the first question. Timing is key. Timing is key. Yes, it is. You get frustrated. I wanted to go after one of my dreams. I put everything on the line for it, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Right. And I had to force myself to get a job. Save my house, yes. my kids, my family. Because it's not meant to happen. And the job yet. turned out to be one of the best things where I'm yes. actually helping people. What I wanted to do with my life, I'm actually doing it in a real life application. Yes. And it's like that goal's still out there. It didn't go away. It just changed the timeline. Just changed. So don't give up on it, but you may have to adjust along the way. That is so true. Thank you for that. Be careful what you wish for, too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, really, that has happened because I always thought I wanted this, and then when it comes your way, you say, oh, that is not what I had hoped for. Because along with that comes much stress or. or <laughs> so when you like identify these signs and maybe they're a little abstract, how do you know how to interpret them and what action you should take based on the sign that Well, that is up to you and what you want to do with that. But I highly just recommend that you acknowledge it in the moment. Because by acknowledging it, then he, he or she or whomever is understanding that they are getting to you now. Now you're open to receive more signs, which will then lead you where you need to be. I had a, a, a woman, just a quick story, that comes to mind, because this is a funny story. Her and I had met, and I do lots of counseling sessions, and I go into groups and talk about this very same subject. Her and I had met for lunch, and she's a, she was a struggling real estate agent, but she just wanted to know, have some questions in her life answered. And she said, how do I know how to, how to ask for signs? I said, you just have to ask. You have to say it out loud. So a day later, she calls me. But what she did after she left our meeting is she traveled home. And in doing so, she said, OK, Denise, she said, I'm going to test this theory. She said, God, 
You know, you have to know her. She did it with attitude, too. She said, God, if there's something to this, send me a deer. She said, I don't want to just see a deer. Send me deers. So she had attitude. And as she's driving her van home, the music started to change, to be in tune with what she was feeling. And she said there was a, immediately within like 10 seconds a deer on the side of the road. Then she's driving, she said, oh yeah? Show me what you got. Oh. So she's driving along, here goes another one. And the radio changed again. She said, okay, well, big deal. And as she said big deal, she remembers this. There were 12 deer right on the center line of the road, right after that. She said she got her husband on the line and she was just absolutely blown away. Ask for what you want in life. He doesn't know. Ask. Say it out loud. Let it be concrete. So, I hope you all enjoyed this seminar. And there are flyers on the back. In the back, thank you. And also a little survey for you to take of the seminar itself. And if I can be of help to you coming and speaking at your organization, just give me a call. Jennifer's going to pass out cards. So, thank you for all listening today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.